Biopolitics is an intersectional field between human biology and politics. It is a political wisdom taking into consideration the administration of life and a locality's populations as its subject. To quote Foucault, it is to ensure, sustain, and multiply life, to put this life in order. The term was coined by Rudolf Kjellin, who also coined the term geopolitics, in his 1905 two volume work The Great Powers. In contemporary U.S. political science studies, usage of the term is mostly divided between a post-structuralist group using the meaning assigned by Michel Foucault denoting social and political power over life and another group who uses it to denote studies relating biology and political science. <laughs> Various definitions In Kjellin's organicist view, the state was a quasi-biological organism, a «super-individual creature». Kjellin sought to study «the civil war between social groups» comprising the state from a biological perspective and thus named his putative discipline «biopolitics». The Nazis also used the term occasionally. For example, Hans Reiter used it in a 1934 speech to refer to their biologically based concept of nation and state and ultimately their racial policy. Previous notions of the concept can actually be traced back to the Middle Ages in John of Salisbury's work Polycraticus in which the coined term body politic is actually used. The first modern usage of the term in English starts with an article written by G. W. Harris in an article for The New Age in 1911 in which he advocates the liquidation of «lunatics» by «state lethal chamber». The concept then starts to gather pace in the 19th century with Walter Bagehot's work Physics and Politics in which he reflects on the term as if he was a trained scientist in the form of Jakob von Uexkel. Bagehō didn't have a scientifically trained mind such as von Uexkel so he Bagehō falls rather short in the explanation of the term. Nevertheless the book has some novel points particularly on the subject of natural selection and politics. Morley Roberts in his 1938 book Biopolitics used to argue that a correct model for world politics is a loose association of cell and protozoa colonies". Robert E. Kuttner used the term to refer to his particular brand of "...scientific racism", as he called it, which he worked out with noted Eustace Mullins, with whom Kuttner co-founded the Institute for Biopolitics in the late 1950s, and also with Glade Whitney, a behavioral geneticist. Most of his adversaries designate his model as anti-Semitic. Kuttner and Mullins were inspired by Morley Roberts, who was in turn inspired by Arthur Keith, or both were inspired by each other and either co-wrote together or with the Institute of Biopolitics Biopolitics of Organic Materialism dedicated to Roberts and reprinted some of his works. In the work of Foucault, the style of government that regulates populations through Biopower, the application and impact of political power on all aspects of human life. In the works of Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, anti capitalist insurrection using life and the body as weapons, examples include flight from power and, in its most tragic and revolting form, suicide terrorism. Conceptualized as the opposite of biopower, which is seen as the practice of sovereignty in biopolitical conditions. The political application of bioethics. A political spectrum that reflects positions towards the sociopolitical consequences of the biotech revolution. Political advocacy in support of, or in opposition to, some applications of biotechnology. Public policies regarding some applications of biotechnology. Political advocacy concerned with the welfare of all forms of life and how they are moved by one another. The politics of bioregionalism. 
the interplay and interdisciplinary studies relating biology and political science, primarily the study of the relationship between biology and political behavior. Most of these works agree on three fundamental aspects. First, the object of investigation is primarily political behavior, which—and this is the underlying assumption—is caused in a substantial way by objectively demonstrable biological factors. For example, the relationship of biology and political orientation, but also biological correlates of partisanship and voting behavior. See also sociobiology. According to Professor Agni Vlavianos Arvanitis, biopolitics is a conceptual and operative framework for societal development, promoting bios Greek equals life as the central theme in every human endeavor, be it policy, education, art, government, science or technology. This concept uses bios as a term referring to all forms of life on our planet, including their genetic and geographic variation. In the colonial setting Equals. Catastrophes are periodically mobilized as vehicles for historical transformation. European states often found themselves grappling with sociobiological propensities of populations. Mercantilism and capitalist modes of production led to a modern biopolitical approach to famine. The modern state depended on providing a diet sufficient to keep the biological machines of industrial capitalism running. The British developed biopolitics in tandem with colonisation to help solidify their control over the Irish. The French Third Republic in Western Africa also employed biopolitics in their colonial efforts. The fin de siècle revolution in microbiology and specific developments in public health legislation aided the French. Furthermore, thanks to the germ theory of disease pioneered by Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur, the etiology of some of the most deadly diseases—cholera and typhoid—began to be understood in the 1890s, and the French used this new scientific knowledge in the tropics of West Africa. Illnesses like bubonic plague were isolated, and vectors of malaria and yellow fever were identified for the political purpose of public health. They passed public health laws to introduce up-to-date health standards. The goal was for African subjects to respond in exactly the same way as metropolitan citizens to market incentives and new technologies imposed by a progressive state. Thus, public health was a political concern in the sense that the state hoped citizens would be more productive if they lived longer. Michel Foucault French philosopher and social theorist Michel Foucault first discussed his thoughts on biopolitics in his lecture series, "'Society Must Be Defended'", given at the Collège de France from 1975 to 1976. Foucault's concept of biopolitics is largely derived from his own notion of biopower, and the extension of state power over both the physical and political bodies of a population. While only mentioned briefly in his "'Society Must Be Defended' lectures, his notion of the concept of biopolitics Foucault never invented the concept has become prominent in social and humanistic sciences. Foucault described biopolitics as a new technology of power that exists at a different level, on a different scale, and that has a different bearing area, and makes use of very different instruments. More than a disciplinary mechanism, Foucault's biopolitics acts as a control apparatus exerted over a population as a whole or, as Foucault stated, a global mass. In the years that followed, Foucault continued to develop his notions of the biopolitical in his The Birth of Biopolitics and The Courage of Truth. 
Lectures. Foucault gave numerous examples of biopolitical control when he first mentioned the concept in 1976. These examples include ratio of births to deaths, the rate of reproduction, the fertility of a population, and so on. He contrasted this method of social control with political power in the Middle Ages. Whereas in the Middle Ages pandemics made death a permanent and perpetual part of life, this was then shifted around the end of the 18th century with the introduction of milieu into the biological sciences. Foucault then gives different contrasts to the then physical sciences in which the industrialization of the population was coming to the fore through the concept of work, where Foucault then argues power starts to become a target for this milieu by the 17th century. The development of vaccines and medicines dealing with public hygiene allowed death to be held and or withheld from certain populations. This was the introduction of more subtle, more rational mechanisms, insurance, individual and collective savings, safety measures, and so on. Topic Notes Topic Further reading Research in Biopolitics, Volume 1, Sexual Politics and Political Feminism Editor Albert Somet Research in Biopolitics, Volume 2, Biopolitics and the Mainstream, Contributions of Biology to Political Science Editor Albert Somet Research in Biopolitics, Volume 3, Human Nature and Politics Editors Stephen A. Peterson Albert Somet 1995. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 4, Research in Biopolitics Editors Albert Somet Stephen A. Peterson 1996. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 5, Recent Explorations in Biology and Politics Editors Albert Somet Stephen A. Peterson 1997. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 6, Sociobiology and Politics Editors Albert Somet Stephen A. Peterson 1998. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 7, Ethnic Conflicts Explained by Ethnic Nepotism Editors Albert Somet Stephen A. Peterson 1999. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 8, Evolutionary Approaches in the Behavioral Sciences, Toward a Better Understanding of Human Nature Editors Stephen A. Peterson Albert Somet 2001. Research in Biopolitics, Volume 9, Biology and Political Behavior, The Brain, Genes and Politics, The Cutting Edge, Editor Albert Somet 2011. Topic External links Steinman, Kate, 2011. Apparatus, Capture, Trace, Photography and Biopolitics in, Philip. Fall 2011. Miguelangel Verde Garrido, 2015. Contesting a Biopolitics of Information and Communications, The Importance of Truth and Surveillance After Snowden in, Surveillance and Society Vol. 13, No. 2, pages 153–167